morning. Welcome to Pine Grove General Baptist Church. And again this morning, if this is your first time joining us through whatever times of means, if you're on one of the platforms on, on the internet or if you're joining us here in the church, it's welcome. We want you to feel at home and join in, join in the worship service and just worship God. Heavenly Father, we thank you this morning, Lord, again for the opportunity to speak on your word and to, and to share your word, Lord. And Lord, we just praise you and thank you for everything that you do for us each and every day, Lord. And we have no words to describe how wonderful you truly are, Lord, and why you would look down on your, on your creatures. And, and Lord, we just tell you this morning that we love you. And we thank you and praise you. And Lord, we pray this morning for the sick around and all around the communities and around the world, Lord. We know that uh, you have the cure, that they'll look to you and that, you know, Lord, that you'll make things better for them and they can know that you are God. And Lord, we pray for the ones who've lost loved ones all around and Lord, for them. Touch them too, Lord, that they may know that you are God. And, and Lord, we pray for the lost. Those all around us, Lord, who just are struggling, struggling with, with sin and struggling out here in the world, Lord, and looking and searching. We don't know what they're looking for. Lord, help us to say something and that they might listen and, and understand and, and look to you because you're the, you're the saving power the saving power of all. And Lord, just be with me this morning as I, as I speak, Lord, and please, Lord, keep your hand on me to help me to say what you would have me to say. In, all in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, well again, once again this morning, I want to tell you that Christ came to do the will of the Father he became the perfect sacrifice for all sin. So that all who believe in their heart that he is truly the Son of God, and then accept him as Lord and give up their own way of life to follow him, can gain eternal life with him. I promised long ago that I'd make this or some kind of similar statement every time that I can. Every time that it's possible. Or, you know, I promised the Lord because... You see, there are many around here and everywhere else that have still never heard or have not yet understood that no matter who you are or what you have done, good or bad, or where you came from, Christ died for your sins. Yes, Jesus Christ died for your sins, whatever they may be. But we have to realize that God sent His own Son to do that for all of us. And when we realize that, that is such a wonderful thing. Because God's will, He did it because God's will is that all come to Him with all parts of their lives each and every day. John 3.16 It says, For God so loved the world that He gave His one and only Son that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. That's a very, a very simple, point blank way to say it. That you have the opportunity. Just come to him. You know, I've been talking about simple things. I'm not going to necessarily do that. But it's still simple. But this, this morning, I want to say that. It's still simple in a message out there to those who, who would doubt and mock Christianity. Beware. Beware what you're doing because we know that as we look around us and we look at all the happenings around the world and the things that are going on, we know that the world of today is filled with mockers of Christianity. But the truth and the danger for them is that mocking those who believe in and follow Christ, which you can mock me if you want to, that, that's not going to matter. But what you're doing when you, when you mock Christianity, those who follow Christ, is that you're rejecting. And you're mocking 
the living God. You're mocking what we believe in. And that's very dangerous. And we see it all around us. Like I said, we see false religions. There's a bunch of people following false idols and dead gods. Those that aren't gods, but only man-made and actually concocted in the mind of Satan. Well, we see false teachers all over, all over the world. It doesn't matter where you're at, they're all over the place and they're all spewing hate. And they're calling for torture and murder of those who disagree with them. Bring about discord, mayhem, and even open warfare all around our world. Well, we know to expect that. The Bible is, tells us that we can expect that. But there's a warning. They need to be aware. Job knew it. In the 17th chapter of Job, in the second verse, he said, while well, he looked around him, and he knew he was talking mainly of his friends, but he was talking of all those who surrounded him. He said, surely mockers surround me. My eyes must dwell on their hostility. And that's what we see all around the world of the mockers. But there's a warning. Beware. Beware what you're doing when you do that. You see, you know, for those who do believe, I want to tell you this morning, even though we see all of this stuff around us, do not despair. No matter what goes on in the world around us, just, just don't. We have the promise of eternal life with Him. We have that promise. And even if it seems that all is lost, we need to remember each and every day that Christ has already overcome the world and death. That's the worst, I guess the worst thing that we can think of that could happen to us in, in this world is we'll die and leave it. Because that's really so terrible when we know Christ and have a promise of eternal life. 2 Peter chapter 3, verse 8 and 9. I like to read these all the time because it's a, prom it's, it's a review of the promises. It says, Do not forget this one thing, dear friends. With the Lord, a day is like a thousand years, and a thousand years are like a day. The Lord is not slow in keeping His promise, as some understand slowness. Instead, He is patient with you not wanting anyone to perish, but everyone to come to repentance. You see, again, this, the world is filled, of, filled with all sorts of mockers today, and just as it was when the Apostle Peter wrote those words. Because they, they believed that, well, it, it should happen now. There were people who were saying that Christ should come back now, but He's patient. But with this passing of time, those we know that those who only believe and spout the lies of Satan, who's taught to doubt even that there is a living God, well, the mockers continue to say all things continue as they were from the beginning of the creation. So for them, it, it, it is hard because that's what they've believed and that's what they've been taught all their lives or what they've come to believe because they can't see that God is patient. So then it's hard to believe in the physical return of Jesus Christ or to think of a judgment to come. So you know, that is why the gospel must be continually preached into the world. Because that's what saves people is the gospel, the gospel message. And when they understand, they just start to even question it and think about it. And God working on their mind and the Holy Spirit working in the world. Those minds can be changed. Not by anything that this poor old man says, but by the gospel of Christ. What's going to happen? That dire warning that, that beware. Revelation 
Revelation chapter 19, verse 19 through 24. And I don't rarely read out of Revelation, but I'm going to this morning. People say I don't talk about the judgment and the bad things. I'd rather talk about the love of God, but then it says... In 19, 19 through 21, it says, Then I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered together to wage war against the rider on the horse and his army. These are those mockers of whatever age. But the beast was captured, and with it the false prophet who had performed the signs on his behalf. And with these signs he had deleted, deluded those who had received the mark of the beast and worshipped his image. And the two of them were thrown into the fiery lake of burning sulfur. And the rest were killed with the sword coming out of the mouth of the rider of the horse. And all the birds gored to themselves on their flesh. Beware, mockers. Beware, false prophets. Beware those promoters of false religions. Christ is coming back. In contrast to what happens with the mockers and the ones who who turn and, and mock Christianity, Christ, uh, mock Christ, and say there is no God. Well, in contrast to those, are those who turn to the Lord. In the book of Psalms, the first, first Psalm, verse 1 and 2, it said, Blessed is the one who does not walk in step of the wicked or stand in the way that sinners take or sit in the company of mockers but whose delight is in the law of the Lord, and who meditates on his law day and night. That person is like a tree planted by streams of water, which yields its fruit in season, and whose leaf does not wither. Whatever they do prospers. Wow. So don't be discouraged as we look around and listen to all the dire things that are going on in our world. Don't be discouraged or dismayed. You know, we're to keep our eyes always focused on Christ, on uh, the believers, and, and listen to the direction of the Holy Spirit. Christ said, said that the Holy Spirit would come back, and He's here, and we all have that advantage. When we believe in Christ and become followers of Jesus, well, we, we have the Holy Spirit to listen to. So we don't need to be discouraged or dismayed. But to those who continue to mock, Again, there's a dire and immediate warning. A dire and immediate warning. You see, the only thing holding back the end of judgment is the patient nature of God and His desire that all come to repentance. But there will be an end to that. You can rest assured there will be an end to that. Because Christ told us that He's coming back. In Revelation 22, 12 through 16, he revealed to the Apostle John and said, so that these words could be come out to all of, all of his believers. To the whole world, in fact. It says, look, I'm coming soon. My reward is with me, and I will give to each person according to what they have done. That's a warning as well as a promise. I am the Alpha and the Omega, the first and the last, the beginning and the end. Blessed are those who wash their robes, that they may have the right to the tree of life, and may go through the gates into the city. The only thing that washes the robes is the blood of Jesus Christ. It's the only thing that removes sin, the blood of Jesus Christ. Because in 15, outside are the dogs, those who practice magic arts, the sexually immoral, the murderers, the adulterers, and everyone who loves and practices falsehood. I, Jesus, have sent my angel to give you this testimony for the churches. I am the root and the offspring of David and the bright morning star. Even in that blessed promise, there's a dire warning to those who are outside, those who do not accept Christ, those who mock. 
a refusal to re accept Christ as a mocking. It's a mocking against the plan of God. So if you're listening this morning, no matter where you are, because I know we have we have listeners at times from around the world, and it doesn't matter if you're listening this morning, no matter where you are, you realize that you're not following God's will for your life. His will is that you would follow Him, you would accept His Son. But instead, you're following your own way, the way of the world, or some false religion, or some false teaching. Well, well, you've never made Jesus the complete Lord of your life. Even if you pretended that you've never made Him the complete Lord of your life, now this morning is the time to surrender your whole life to God. Pray to Him. Just a simple prayer. I don't have a, a sinner's prayer to recite for you. But it needs to include that you believe that Jesus is the Son of God who died on the cross and rose again for your sins. You need to acknowledge that you've sinned against, against God by not accepting Christ as your Savior. All those other sins that are there, okay. But the one that condemns everyone is not accepting Christ. Christ will clean you up. Christ will help you to avoid the sins of this world. Because he died to make those forgiven. But you have to acknowledge him. And you have to ask him. And believe when you ask him. And mean it when you ask him to come into your life. And let him change who you are. From that moment on. Never look back. And that prayer can be simple, must, but you know, the commitment must be real and complete. Not just a simple little untrue word of mouth. That prayer has come from, from your heart. And when it happens, don't let it in there. Tell somebody. Go attend a church somewhere. If you've been in one and you've been playing around, well, quit. Because playing around and playing church is a mockery. It's a mockery to God. Get in with the group. Help that group. Lift them up. struggles hard alone. We have the Holy Spirit, we have the Word of God, and we have other true Christian friends and brothers and sisters. If you have no church and you're in this area, come see us. No, we're not a perfect church. No. But we face those things that we do that are not right and we ask for God's help. And we know that he provides. So come try us out. That's my invitation this morning to you. From Pine Grove General Baptist Church, 102 Silver Tree Road, Shirley, Arkansas. We stand here and we know that God loves us. And we know that God loves you. No matter where you are, He's waiting patiently for you to come to Him. Heavenly Father, thank you again, Lord, for this moment, this, this time this morning to look into your word, Lord, and to understand that there is a, a dire consequences for those who would mock and ignore the Son of God. Oh, Father, we, we pray the message reaches people 
touches their heart. Let's know that there is a God out there that loves them. That loves them. And his love needs to go around the world. Thank you, Father. Thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Have a great day. Remember that God loves you. Tell someone else that God loves them.